This is a story about a brave little girl. She had pretty blue eyes and a head full of curls. She's amazing from the day she was born. When you looked in her eyes, and they were the brightest blue. Mommy. Hi. My name is Alex. Something was wrong. She was not well. Things, Things were, were not, not right, her parents could tell. About nine months on, I thought there was something wrong with her. I feel bad. You feel bad? The doctor looked her over and said she is sick. Alex had a disease called neuroblastoma. It's a very rare cancer. Alex was brave and strong and tough, but still the medicine wasn't enough. I good. feel good. You feel good? And I feel bad sometimes. We knew the reality of neuroblastoma and that she she probably would not survive, not survive, not survive. What can I do to help myself and others too? And then she said, I'm gonna have my lemonade stand. And there was cookies and there was lemonade. And there was pizza. I raise money. For what? Cancer research. Best lemonade in town. <laughs> Thank you. They waited in line, the young and the old. People just kept coming and coming. It was, uh, it was unbelievable. You want two? Thank you. You're welcome. Everyone wondered how Alex's story would end. Nothing prepares you at all. You know, it's harder than you would ever think. But it feels like your heart is broken. Lemonade! Oh, we are very good. Yeah, that looks really nice. If more kids would help, wouldn't it be great? We, we could, could have, have lemonade, lemonade stands, stands in every state. Thank you very much. Just a donation, yep. Liz and I thought that probably the lemonade stand would just go away. But it took off completely, and stands started popping up all over the place. We sold lemonade and made $300. We raised a total of $500. We raised $53. They had raised lots of money for the cure that was needed. To me, it is astonishing what a four-year-old created that has helped literally keep my son alive. A couple of the chemotherapies I've been on probably never would have been created without her. We would just thank her from the bottom of our hearts. It's helping people. Alex and a lot of other angels are rooting for us. I think her legacy is, it's hope. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. A child is born wrapped in the hopes and expectations of the parents. Such was the case when Alexandra Flynn Scott came into the world on January 18, 1996, in Manchester, Connecticut. Every parent just pictures their children growing up and being healthy and happy. That's what we thought about Alex, just wanted her to be happy. Have a great childhood. Be successful in life. She was successful. A parent's hopes and expectations change quickly with a baby's cry and a mother's intuition. From about nine months on, I thought there was something wrong with her, and I brought her back to the doctor about, I think it was 11 times in nine weeks, telling, them that I, telling him that I thought there was something wrong with her. And finally, our last visit there, he said to me, you need to stop treating her like she's sick. There's nothing wrong with her. A mother's heart is rarely wrong. A few days later, Jay and Liz Scott rushed their little girl to the emergency room. Alex was admitted and taken for an MRI. And we saw doctors going in and coming out and nobody would look at us. So we knew, we knew there was something wrong. And then when they took us into a, a room and, and there was a big table and they put down a box of Kleenex and said someone will be in to talk to you in a couple of minutes. And uh, you know, it all hit us, hit us very hard then that sense of total panic you get with your kids, like if you've ever lost track of them in a mall or something for even two seconds, it was that feeling. That feeling that your child is lost would hit the Scots in waves over the coming days and years. Alex spent her first birthday on a surgeon's table 
having a cancerous tumor removed from her spine. And then they came in and said um, there was a complication during the surgery and she's paralyzed from the chest down. And she's never going to walk again. And that was when it hit me. I thought, oh my gosh, you know, if she survives, what kind of life is she going to have? What kind of life is she going to have? Four months after surgery. At just one year old, this is when we get our first glimpse at the spirit and determination of Alex Scott. Yay. Extreme determination. I mean, she would, she worked out really hard to teach herself how to walk. And she would do it screaming and crying because it was a lot of work. Good job. Yeah, there you go. Even though the doctors said she would never walk, She did. That's a girl, yes! She goes from crawling to standing to walking with leg braces, and then eventually, you know, she walked without leg braces. Oh my goodness! But walking wasn't Alex's biggest challenge. The tumor on her spine was neuroblastoma, a rare form of cancer. Despite surgery and chemotherapy, the cancer was spreading. Alex is in for her third treatment. Here's her IV. The doctors said, she wouldn't live long. Alex just kept proving them wrong again and again. One of the things that you almost becomes part of, of the treatment is to sit down with the doctor telling you, you know, there's no hope for a cure. And with Alex, you know, she would always pull through. We would call it the sit down. So we had, you know, eight, ten of those. Can you look at me? Right here. <laughs> but Jay learned that all doctors are not created equal. What the heck was it? <laughs> After a sit down, he was told about John Maris, a doctor at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia who was offering hope when others couldn't. It's like an 11 hour trip from Connecticut to Philly, and she was in awful pain on morphine around the clock. After three days of a special radiation treatment that few hospitals offer, Alex left CHOP a different little girl. Just smiles and laughter and what are we going to do now? That was an unbelievable feeling. Alex felt so good, she had an idea. She said, just randomly, can I have a lemonade stand when I get out of the hospital? She kept asking, when can I set up the lemonade stand? You know, first it was once a month, and it was once a week, and it was every day. And then finally Liz said, what is it that you want? I can just buy it for you. When she said, I'm not keeping the money, I'm giving it to my hospital. Even then, I thought, how cute. In June of 2000, Alex finally had her first lemonade stand. I've been wanting to raise money for them for a while. Just that because, was my idea. Right. The cute idea raised $2,000. That's when I realized how important it was to her. She said, as she, when she was getting into bed, she was exhausted. And I said, so, you know, what do you think? She said, this was the best thing that's ever happened to me. She was four years old. Soon after that, the Scott family moved to the Philadelphia area so that Alex could get more advanced treatments at Children's Hospital. Alex brought something with her, her dream. And there she was, wearing mittens and a winter hat in front of her Wynwood home on a bitterly cold October day, keeping that dream alive. It was as if she knew she didn't have a lot of time. Probably by the time she was four and she lost Teresa, who was a close friend, she really knew, um, you know, the possibilities of her diagnosis. She was upset at first, and then she said, I'm going to have my lemonade stand and I'm going to do it in memory of Teresa. <laughs> The story of the little girl with cancer raising money in memory of her friend who died of cancer made the Sunday Magazine section of the Philadelphia Inquirer. They did a full color picture and they talked about her upcoming lemonade stand, put our home address and our home phone number in there. And by the time she even opened her stand, she had already raised $2,000. And that day she raised about $12,000. I think that was our first inkling that it was going to be something special then. And just, people just kept coming and coming. It was, uh, it was unbelievable. Both sides of the roads were lined up and it was a wild scene. And things just kept getting wilder. 
And there's a lot that all of us can learn from her. National news programs did stories. Alex Scott is not your run-of-the-mill girl. The incredible movement she started is continuing. Please to come to my lemonade stand. National sponsors wrote checks, and national magazines did interviews. I raise money. For what? Cancer research. And why is that important to you? Because it's helping people. The little girl with the lemonade stand was becoming a national celebrity. That's when I think Liz and I realized, whoa, oh, this is really getting big. We need to think about what we're doing here. But before Liz and Jay could stop to think, Alex told a reporter she was going to raise a million dollars. What's the goal of this year's lemonade stand? One million dollars. I said, Alex, you're going to raise a million dollars. How are you going to do that? And she said, well, I think if everybody has lemonade stands and everybody sends their donations in, we can do it. A lofty goal for a little girl who was fading fast. We celebrated her eighth birthday in January of 2004, knowing that it was her last birthday. She was getting weak, losing weight. We could just tell. Alex undoubtedly could tell too, but she was on a mission. So when Oprah called, she went to Chicago. We told her you don't need to do this and she, she said, are you crazy, this is Oprah. So Alex, what's the most expensive cup of lemonade you've ever sold? Um, five, $500. So they asked us to give you this check. The check is for $25,000. You make us proud. Thank you. Thank you, too. After the Oprah taping, it was to New York. How you doing, Alex? For a live appearance on the Today Show. You think you're doing a lot of good things for people? Yeah. It makes me feel good that I'm helping people. An appearance that Alex's father has a difficult time talking about. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. When Alex was doing the, the, the Today Show interview, she had just had a lot of radiation to her neck, and she really was having trouble talking until we went to the interview. You know, we tried to talk her out of going, and she said, that, you know, no, I need to go on. Alex, will you come back next year when you can show me the million dollars and you can set up a lemonade stand for us here on the plaza again? Yeah, hopefully. I think she knew that. She knew she wouldn't make it back. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't believe you want to raise a million. It was one of those rare television moments that touched the hearts of everyone who saw it. Donation. Today Show said they never saw anything like it because people started handing money to Matt Lauer. And he said, what, what, what should I do? They're giving me money. So the crew said, pass the bucket, pass the bucket. So my sons and I passed the bucket around. We raised about $1,000 in two minutes. And money just kept coming in from children and lemonade stands across America. My sister, brother, neighbors, and I had a lemonade stand. We, we were 14,000 and we're giving all the help to you for you to donate to children who have cancer. I am enclosing a picture of our... I hope I help you. We also heard about your cancer. We hope you get well. Relax. The lemonade stand went great. Good luck, your friend. My friends helped me because I wasn't feeling good. In June of 2004, Alex Scott, with the help of children selling lemonade across America and one big check from Volvo, raised $1 million for pediatric cancer research. Thank you. You're welcome. She would, you know, I think during this time, she made the lemonade stand sort of her focus. You know, and I think it allowed her to hold on a little longer. She, she wanted to see her million dollar goal met. She wanted to make one last lemonade stand, which she did. Seven weeks later, on August 1st, Alexandra Flynn Scott died peacefully in her bed at home with her parents by her side. And the one thing she said to me that really gave me a lot of hope was, um, she said, Mommy, can you help me? And I said, yeah, what do you need? And she said, can you help me get over that wall so I can run? 
And um, she goes, never run. She said it in a, a, in a good way, like help me get over it so I can run. I wanna run. Death could have brought an end to a wondrous crusade. For what is Alex's lemonade stand without Alex? Liz and I thought that probably the lemonade stand would just go away after Alex died, but the response was so overwhelming that wasn't an option. I'll oh, we'll be right there. Oh, I like what you just said. The Scots received thousands of phone calls and emails and letters of encouragement to keep the stand of hope alive. One of those calls came from a man about a horse. I talked to Liz in October 2004. I saw where they reached their initial goal of a million dollars, and I wanted to continue this great cause. And he said, I've been donating to you anonymously from the winnings from my horse, whose name is Alex. And I was wondering how you would feel about us doing this publicly you know, to create awareness. Immediately, there seemed to be a cosmic connection between the two Alexes. She was a little girl who saw visions of running when she died. And he was born to run. A fleet Alex to run. Oh, how a fleet Alex could run. I don't think anybody could have known how, how good the horse was at that point. And then he started winning and he just kept winning. On his way to a victory. He took the Scott family lemonade. and their lemonade stand to the Kentucky Derby. A fleet Alex was right there at the end with a chance to win it, could not hold on. He raised all this money for the Alex lemonade stand, which is a lot more important than us actually winning the race. But a fleet Alex would win, pulling off a miracle at the Preakness. He actually stumbled, and everybody there, I mean, we were there with our stand, went, <gasps> just like gasped, and then there was like a second of silence. 99 out of 100 times, the jockey will fall off, the horse will go down, and really it could turn into a tragic story. And then to see him pop up like that and finish was just so much Alex. Alex the horse and, and Alex my daughter. So much determination and so much courage and so strong. Alex, has won the Alex Scott and the little angels up there were definitely helping us that day. The Scots couldn't make the Belmont Stakes, the last leg of horse racing's triple crown. They were busy running a lemonade stand like they have for the past five years on the second weekend of June, only this time without Alex. They watched the other Alex from inside their daughter's elementary school. But watching them, you had the feeling they were rooting for more than just a horse. They were rooting for a child's dream. With the help of a man and his horse, the Scots have raised over six million dollars Good afternoon, Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation. And now run the Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation from an office in Wynwood, Pennsylvania. We were hoping to raise 25 million in five years. So. You sound like Alex. Yeah. <laughs> The foundation continues to grow with its own song when you're written by the legendary Kenny Gamble. Alex in the Amazing Lemonade Stand. A children's book. This is a story about a brave little girl. And a bottled lemonade now available in stores. All to help children just like Alex. I'm getting treatment to help me feel better. And do you feel better? Yes. The money is helping keep eight-year-old Ella Prickett alive. She has neuroblastoma just like Alex. And just like Alex, her parents brought her to Philadelphia from St. Louis looking for life's most valuable commodity. We need time. We need the time that uh, is necessary for research. There are definitely um, 
new treatments, new approaches available today that are, were not available when Alex was alive. Just a donation, yep. Thank you very much. Treatments made possible by Alex and her legion of lemonade stands. You go up to a lemonade stand and you, give, you stick a dollar in the box. That might be the dollar, you know? That might be the dollar that enabled somebody to discover something. Sue Levine's 15-year-old son, Max, is waiting for that something. He also has neuroblastoma. If anyone else has cancer and they, have, if they, if they need some advice, just take, take it one day at a time. And one of those days, in a lab somewhere, someone will find a cure. Alex's Lemonade! Alex's Lemonade Stand is funding 30 different research projects across America. One of the problems with childhood cancer is that there's not very much funding for it, for the research. It's difficult for drug companies to put a lot of money into childhood cancer because they know that they're not going to make their money back anytime soon. Without research, there's no hope. Amy Jackson's four-year-old son, Kendall, has neuroblastoma. I mean, there is no real cure for this type of cancer. Do you know what your diagnosis is, what you have? Cancer. What kind? Uh, brain tumor. 14-year-old Danny Hammond. They held a lemonade stand in his honor at Holy Cross Elementary School in Springfield, Pennsylvania, and in honor of Michelle Brown's daughter, Lauren, who died at the age of four from neuroblastoma. If you see a stand, stand support it. It, you know, it will help those kids, and you just don't know if you might be that family affected next. Thank you. Thank you. Help out. I definitely think you need help. Find it secure. Did you notice something about Danny and Ella and Max and Kendall? They seem to share a common spirit. They all have that spirit and that spark that you just, you don't know where they get their strength from. A spirit of hope, the spirit of Alex Scott. I'm getting treatment to help me feel better. And do you feel better? Yes. There are eternal questions that haunt us, like why do children have to die? We can't answer why Alex Scott died, but we do know why she lived. Children for generations to come now have a chance at a long life because of Alex Scott. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. She is our reminder that it is not the quantity of the years, but the quality of the lifetime. There was water ice, and there was donuts, and there was cookies, and there was lemonade. And there was pizza. Please come to my lemonade stand. I've been wanting to raise money for them for a while. Just that because, was my idea. Right, because they do so much, but it was her idea, so she beat me to it. I raise money. For what? Cancer research. And why is that important to you? Because it's helping people.